What's happening, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. My name is Will. You've got Nine. You've got Gage. Hi. And we're going to talk about a lot of awesome stuff today. By the way, we want to give a quick shout out to Miss Sam. Uh, Sam will be uh, doing other things, but you're stuck with us, and this is what you got moving forward. So God bless Sam and everything she did. We're going to talk about today The Last of Us open world games and new IP. So we got a lot to go over. Let's start off with. The Last of Us. The Last of Us. The Last of Us. Everybody loves Two. The Last of Us. Potentially. Won tons of awards. Phenomenal game. Blew up. Got re-released on the PS4. Continued to sell it to With the, the DLC. But in Seven recent player. news, Mr. Nolan North himself might have slipped a little bit of information. Might Nolan have. North is my hero. Okay. And he's Let's start guy. with that. Nolan, we'd love to have you on the show. <laughs> call we, know you're, we know you're watching. Just call us. Do it. We know you want to. But what do we hear? What's the rumor? Uh, so Nolan North did a panel at some con last week or two weeks ago, somewhere, and he was doing a Q&A session afterwards, and somebody asked him about his character in The Last of Us, and he kind of went on the spiel and said, well, I know they're working on The Last of Us too." And everyone's like, oh, everybody was like, are they? Uh, <laughs> what? Hello? Uh -huh. Excuse me? Say that again now? <laughs> And he just kind of like went in and out of the voice from Last of Us. Uh, what was his name? Um, uh, the 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 guy. Start with a G. Yeah. Greg Gary, something like that. Greg Gary. Greg Gary. We'll just call him Gregory. Greg Gary. No. Um, <laughs> and and you know he's just talking and talking and talking and says, yeah, I don't know how my character is really going to play out in Last of Us Two because he died in Last of Us One. We had and Ellie. Well, no, no, we're saying that's how what Nolan North is saying. Nolan, like, North is, but, Nolan North's character died in Last of Us One. He was. Do you have to play it again? The, the, play it again. Have you played the game? Of course, I've played it. Play it again. He, he's the the guy with all the magazines that Ellie's looking at. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Nolan North's character. Why can't I think of the name of the character in the game? I, I, it eludes me. The the main character. Joel. 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 Yeah. That's, that's Troy Baker. Yeah. That's a different I, guy. I know. I was just trying to think. Anyway, he's so doing so, some other stuff right now. But you know, it'd be foolish to think that they're not going to do another Last of Us. I mean, the game. Well, it's foolish to think that because not not on a story base. Because you played the story, you're probably like, oh, you know, it's fine well, how it they is. They left it open. Naughty Dog said that Last of Us Two is not dead. Joel and Ellie's story, it's is over. It. Yeah. Like it's just done. But this is a game that sold millions, millions of copies. Are people tons of be wars. frustrated about that? Uh, I, I would I would be frustrated if it's a Joel and Ellie game. Really? Yeah. So you want something different? Yes. I want the Firefly stuff. I think a Firefly game would be cool. I, I, I just want I want really some cool. other perspective because I because we played the survivor role, right? And I, I just want something different. I don't want to replay so, another story like that so with Joel different characters. So Joel and story has ended. They're off doing, they're surviving, they're doing their thing. Done. But now we want somebody else's perspective on this apocalypse, more or less. Play as the zombie. <laughs> no, <laughs> Waiting for the character to come through. I don't want to be a clicker. Nah, no, no. That would be good. Maybe, maybe um, a multiplayer DLC. I think, I think playing through the Fireflies trying to track down Joel and Ellie would no. be pretty cool. Because it could be running a fast-paced... Randomly running into them? It could be I'm a sure that would be experience. some kind of It could be a co-op experience. It could be mm -hmm. fast-paced. It could be aggressive and brutal, just like in Last of Us. And it would tie everything nice and neatly together in a nice little boat. No, I think yeah, I would rather... You're an idiot. I would rather see you <laughs> as like the the bad guys in the game, like the pillagers or whatever. I don't remember what they actually the have. Pillagers. A name. Yeah, you know the people who are just beating up people. Like to the guys in stuff. Philadelphia that set up the trap and yeah, never turn playing apart. as them, but as characters inside of that that don't agree with that, but are only doing it to survive and having a face off with the fireflies throughout the game. That I think would be more so interesting. You want to be dynamic. Joel and Ellie? No. All right, so moving That's on. Exactly what you uh, just now, described. if we, there is any more information, The Last of Us 2 will, of course, have that for you. Another news Visceral uh, is releasing a Star Wars game that's supposed to be similar to Uncharted. Amy Hennig yes. is the lead writer and director for this. And what else did she do? Uncharted. Yes. Uncharted. <laughs> but, Shocker. But she came out and said that this will be a lot like Star Wars 1313. Yep. She did say awesome. that. She Which said is it's the basically big news that came out about this. Yeah, the revival of 1313. Yeah. It's not 1313. It's not 1313. But it is very like, yes. focused and heavily surrounded by Han Solo and bounty hunters and stuff like that. With like big set pieces like Uncharted yes. and things like Huge that. Huge set pieces. So you follow so if it's un, if it's like Uncharted then you fo you'll follow Nathan a Drake. character. You'll follow a main character. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. And of so course I think you have main character Boba Fett. I I Han Solo. I would, new, I would like it to be... It could be a new bounty hunter Chewbacca. altogether. Chewbacca. IG-88. <laughs> huh? IG-88. 
Yeah. No, Jar-Jar I would rather. Binks. I would think I would rather play as. I would not play a Jar Jar Binks game. Nope. I would probably burn EA down yeah. if they released a Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> game. Would the game sell more copies if your main character is Boba Fett or Han Solo? Both. What the fuck? Yeah. Yes. Well, you can play yes. both. Sure. You yes can do is both. My you could do both. But I think I would could rather a play as a could story be a, driven Han Solo like game. Could be like we did with uh, um, Force Unleashed. A what? Could be like the Force Unleashed, so have an introduced kind of a new like a, kind of canon new kind of character for the series. Yeah, uh, and you can go either way. It could be another Force Unleashed game. Mm. It could be Bounty Hunter turns good. Uh. It could be Han Solo turns Bounty Hunter. No, if you're gonna do, don't mess up Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> Either one of those games could stand alone. You could do, of course, you could do Vader. You could do Luke. You could take you could the Pokemon route and release two. One where you play as Han Solo, yeah. and one where you play as Yeah, and the only way to get all the DLC is, is to have both. a friend. <laughs> There's an <Yeah>. idea. <laughs> We're evolving games here, people. Right. <laughs> so, so I don't know. That's just, I'm just. I just know that I'm excited for that kind of game for a I Star would. Wars game. You the know? fact that she's behind this and Visceral's behind it. A lot yeah, of people like, are complaining about Battlefront doesn't do have it. a story mode. There's no story for Battlefront. You're getting a story-driven Star Wars game, though. I, I think the, a legitimate complaint. I think the game's going to stand alone and be amazing. I don't care what you say, but I think it's <laughs> I'm not bashing awesome. this one. I'm excited about this. I haven't I'm bashing anything Battle from this Battlefront. I think it'll stand alone and still be great. Okay. This is definitely a direction I think a lot of Star Wars fans will, will want to see. Because again, you know, Force Unleashed. There was a game that came out on the 64. Um, <laughs> Shadows of the Empire. Which yeah, one? That's that a great, great game. You know, so, some really good stuff there, but. Anyway, uh, we'll see what happens. Of course, we'll have more information for you on that when it comes out. <laughs> uh, when it gets officially announced. When we get back, we're going to talk about open world games uh, right after this. See you. Hey everybody, welcome back to Press Start TV. I started singing in my head. <laughs> my name's Will, this is Nine, you've yep. got Gabe. Hi. We just got done talking about The Last of Us and a visceral Star Excellent. Wars game um, kind of that looks like Uncharted. So that was really <laughs> a cool. Star Wars game that looks like Uncharted? No, a Star Wars game that is like Uncharted. Not looks like. I don't want Star Wars in the jungle. Right. That's so, happened. Is like <laughs> or Uncharted. Anyway, where you follow a main character. Anyway. So, uh, open world games. Uh, you've played them. Uh, they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But just how big do we want games to get? Um, some Five people, times the size of Skyrim. Some people might say, bring it on. Make it as big as you possibly can. Well, other people might be like, this is too big. It's going to deter me from actually buying it. Um, what kind of player are you, Gage? I, <laughs> The Witcher. Cool game so far. Yeah. I've touched Huge. it in weeks. Uh, I, I'm kind of overwhelmed by how big the game actually is, is how much there is to do. I get sidetracked so easily in those kind of games. Um, that's why I kind of really didn't get into Skyrim. I haven't played much of the Fallout series. Uh, just because it's just a lot to take in. And I don't know whether just if I'm following the main story or if the stuff I do along the way is something I'm supposed to do. It's just like it's, it's too much. Yeah, you it's know, too some, much. Some people, though, if you have a game like Fallout that has a massive following, or even Skyrim that, that has a huge following, if you're into that world, or you're into that environment, and that's the game you've been dying to get, you're going to spend the time. Yeah, but I don't want to spend 300 hours you. on a game. I because your approach so on it is more of a casual perspective, where this person's like hardcore into Batman or Dark Souls, right? You're not going to casually play Dark Souls. You, you're there's take, no casuals in Dark Souls. You know what I mean? Get good. <laughs> I suck at it. So, so Batman, you 100 percented yeah. already. So yeah. you're going to spend the time because you like the environment. So you like yeah, the, he likes the characters. Well, I got, well yeah, oh, I, li- I like Batman. But I, again, playing that game, if that game was some other character, just new character, it just, I didn't feel overwhelmed. Everything was given to me in a linear kind of way. It's open world. I can explore other dialogues through other characters that are just floating around or do the side missions whenever I want to. But it felt like it was open world but condensed, where I didn't feel like I was just overwhelmed with so many options. Right. True. Nine, how about you? What kind of a game are you? I like the freedom of open worlds, like Skyrim. <laughs> so the bigger, the better. The bigger and more to do, the better, because I'm going to keep coming back to that game. I'm always going to find something to do, no matter where. I There's still people finding things to do in Skyrim today. You that game came out years ago. And to think Fallout 4 is five times that size. <laughs> That's huge. That's going to suck up a I lot of games. I've put a lot of time into Witcher, and I'm still nowhere near. Now, do you go back to that? Do you prefer that because you know that there's more to do? I always so know head, that when know. I go back to those games, there's always going to be something to do. There's it's more not like 
Batman where I'll finish at 100%, mm -hmm. I'll beat New Game Plus, and mm -hmm. then there's nothing else to do. DLC. I'm, <laughs> why would I do that when I have games like Witcher and Skyrim, which I don't have to buy DLC for, to always find something to do? Just saying, I would I would recommend watching the game, too. always something to do. And I guess that's the thing with DLC is just, like, again, if you really like it, you're going to get it. Yeah. You know, Call of Duty, if you played zombies, whatever, and you want the new zombie maps, you're going to buy it. I mean, it's just how yeah. it's like, yeah. But so so for me, um, you know, I don't really care either way. As long, as <laughs> I just play games. That's a cop out. But because, Pick one. Because it just you depends how good the game is, I think. It, it, if, if, it, if there's Not, still story, if there's still side quests, if the side quests are fun enough to warrant traveling all over the place and doing all this different stuff, it makes sense. But if the side quests are boring, and the world's too big, then I'm going to lose interest. Yeah, well, that's how I kind of feel with The Witcher sometimes, traveling yeah. to new cities. It just takes a long time, and there's so much along the way, but then, travel like, actually boat. getting... To, huh? Travel by boat. No, I can go by the horse just right now, because I'm at the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I have that, what, what's his name, Randy? I have Roach. the horse. Roach. Roach. <laughs> So, so in a game like Batman, though, you're, I know what you're saying, because like you have like everything's kind of more condensed into the city. There's always something going around each turn. There's guys always kind of coming at you yeah. and all that kind of thing. Uh, so if you're doing side quests, they're, they're only a couple But they're minutes. presented in like a time perspective where I can get to those three. I mean, there's, they'll give you like three right off the you bat. You do them all, and then you go do the story, and then you get a new one, and then you do all of them again. Yeah, and, and, you you go back, and yeah, you're given to them in a, a spread out way so you don't get too distracted from what you actually want to do. Right. So... so, so Go ahead. Well, like I'm doing The Witcher, so if I'm going from main story mission to main story mission, there's like 50 side quests in the way that I start working on like five of them, and then I lose four hours trying to get, to, not saying that's a bad thing, but I just, I want to get through the main story. That's my, no, that's I, what I like. In yeah. games like The Witcher too, if you progress the main story too much, you'll lose options mm -hmm. to do side quests. And I can't oh, go back and do you that. Can't fail. You can't go See? back. You'll, you'll fail them because a character will die or a person won't be in a tame town anymore and you can't progress it anymore. It's a cool dynamic, but I don't think it's for me. Love it. <laughs> By the way, you're listening to Press Start TV. You got Will, Nine, and Gage. Yep. So a game is coming out that I'm a little concerned about how big the open world is would be Mad Max. I know you have a car. Uh, you can travel all around, you can do Gage all this kind of different things. Yeah. But in a game like Zelda, the bigger it is, the better. Because, again, fans are so into that game. But see, there's always different stuff that could do. When you're out and about exploring in a Zelda game and you discover what you feel is like this unexplored place that no one else has ever seen before. But nine times that's so out of fun. with Zelda, you need a piece of equipment to get through that dungeon. I'm just saying, but the world is there and, and you can do the enemies, you can do, you know, some of the farming that you can do depending on what your, what game it is, you know, could be fun. Say, I'm a farming But zone. they have to make a way for the travel system uh, where you're not just using fast travel all over the place because you use fast travel where you're missing everything. Oh, yeah. So say you're going directly there with whatever they give you, whether tools to get there, whether it's horse, car, boat. You got to have <laughs> things along the way, it's got to keep you interested, yeah. Well. Well, what do you want to see? Well, see, I, I, Batman did it great because it's yeah. a, but like if I'm doing like a big open world, I don't want to be overwhelmed on the way there. But it's got to be getting there. It's got to be fun. So like we played Mad Max. Yeah. Driving wasn't very fun to me. I didn't like the driving aspects they gave me right away. Actually, I thought driving was cool. I don't know. <laughs> didn't see, like it. The combat was good. I think Skyrim hit the nail on the head. Okay. You could fast travel at any point you discovered, but you couldn't fast travel to it until you actually discovered it. Right. A lot of places are so like that. Once like you that. progress through the entire map and you know, oh, I've already found everything between this point and this point, you just fast travel there and you're done. Or like, how about it, like Far Cry? Far Cry is a great example too. Great example. So you I mean, getting... fast travel to certain points. Right. So, so you still had to explore everything in between. Games keep getting bigger, stay where they are. Getting bigger. Um, I'm all for pushing the boundaries with equipment and hardware. I say the bigger the better. Um, anyway, we'll have more right after this. We're talking about new IPs right after the break. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we just got done talking about Last of Us and open world games. Now we're going to talk about new IPs versus remakes. Um, at E3 this year, um, there were so many good games, and you can check out all of our coverage on that on Press Start TV uh, on our YouTube channel, which we'll go over that here later on. But you're watching and listening to Press Start TV uh, right now. My name's Will. This is Gage. Hi. This is Nine. Yellow. Um, so, yeah, E3 brought new IPs, and obviously some of the biggest news were about some of the remakes. That's where all the hype out. seems to be. Yeah, because it's, there's fans of already of, of that series. I guess that's true. Biggest announcement of the show uh, for most people was definitely the entire 
remake of Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy VII. VII. Oh uh, my goodness. Now they're doing, they're doing a port too, right? No, the port has since been canceled. Has it? Officially? Uh, I thought I heard that they were doing I thought it was still coming. The port is not coming to PS4. Okay. The remake is coming to PS4. That makes me think the remake's coming sooner than I thought. first thought. Exactly. That's crazy. So, so <clears throat> there's a remake, and then some new IPs like Horizon. Horizon looks, uh, looks awesome. incredible. Lo looks really, really good. Um, so w where is this competition at? I mean, do we want to see more? Or do we well, want to see less? And we, I mean, we were there. We're sitting in there. We're watching the presentations. Everything's being announced. And like when the when Final Fantasy comes on, everyone's screaming and yelling and jumping. And then Shinmu Three is coming on and screaming, and yelling and jumping. But then like uh, awesome looking IP like Horizon comes up. Uh, everyone's kind of like. All right, sweet. Yeah, Guerrilla Games make it a game again. Awesome, because cool. Because of the fans. Yeah, but I mean, of course, it's easy for a developer or someone or a publisher to be like, okay, well, <clears throat> we, you can make a new IP, or would you rather remake your old game that's already got this huge following, huge success? That's why fans got excited because they've already played these games and they've been wanting these remakes. They're like, why won't they do this? They, we we just want this one game. Right. Do it and we'll be happy. But I, versus I, showing them something they've never seen before, it's easier to get excited for something they're familiar with. Yeah, exactly. Seeing, I know. We've you know? been seeing a lot of remakes recently. We've been seeing a ton. I mean, we've got Gears and Don't get me wrong. Dishonored we coming are to new consoles. with remakes at the moment. And the Rare Replay's got 30 of their old games coming yeah, to Yeah, but that's them. not really a remake. It's, it's, not, re it's not a remake, I know, but it's just location. bringing it to another situation. Or right. Rare's new game, I'd rather them focus all on that. Yeah, um, CFPs. CFPs. yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a new one coming out, which looks amazing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 don't, yeah, I don't know if amazing. it's really a competition, but I guess there's a fine line. If you're a developer, what do you choose to do? Nine, what it, do you think? I, you know, as a developer, it, it's going to depend on how much time do you need for a new IP. So if you can buy time with a remake... It's more risky, maybe? Make the remake while you're also working on this new IP. And when you've got the IP ready to be announced and polished and ready to go, Bring it to the stage. Yeah. And I, I mean, I agree with that. I think a developer goes in knowing, like, here's some projects we want to work on. We can do this new IP or this idea or this remake of an old game that we already made that people love. And more than likely, your publisher is going to be like, we're going to give you more money with where we know the money is at. So they make the remake saying, okay, that's going to make some money. So that makes the money and that helps them work on their new IP also. By the I way, think that's you how you're watching works. and listening to Press Start TV, Will Gage 9. So um, but on the other hand, to your, to your point though, I, I think that if you have a history of success like Naughty Dog or Gorilla, um, like they're bringing out, out Horizon, if they know that they're gonna, their goal is to bring a new IP and bring new, new fans into it, I mean, if you can create a great game, you can still earn those fans and then like do oh, yeah. the Ubisoft thing where you create everything as a franchise where you do different installments. Well, of, uh, speaking of Ubisoft, they're taking a huge risk putting out For Honor. I mean, that's totally. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not yeah. exactly a new idea, but it's, it's a totally. A new IP. It's a new IP for them, and that's. I mean, you don't see new IPs out of Ubisoft well, watch, watch at all. Yeah, well, watch I mean, Watch Dogs, but of course, Watch Dogs was a big risk, but Division. it's also. It followed the same formula as for them. Division's been working on forever. Yeah. They're yeah. still We've, trying to get that. That was announced Ducks as a launch stuff. title for Xbox One and PS4. And look where we are now. It's, we're going to be 2016 looking at it. I'm Two sorry, years out, and it's still... I mean, yeah, it, it's exciting, but new is, IPs, they're difficult. Is it is it faster to... I guess it's faster to produce a, uh, a, a remake, right? Well, yeah, I mean, they already have the assets They have for assets stuff ready to go. They don't have to script anything out. They've got the script. They've got characters, names, all that stuff. All they got to do is program it and... Put it in there. Yeah, that's all nice and dandy. No, I see some new stuff too. You got to come up with characters. You got to come up with script. You got to come up with combat design, environment design, the theme, the whole nine yards. Sure. I, don't, I, mean, I don't mind the shout out to to the previous great games like the Gears of War thing. We talked about uh, with the Coalition interview we did with mm -hmm. that at E3 it was great because they also announced Gears Four. So yeah, so yeah. I mean, we knew that was coming. And then and then they here's here's a remastered version of all these other great games that we've done. Watch is why you loved our game in the first right. place, right? And then you know you've got games like Uncharted 4, which got pushed back to spring of 2016, yeah. but then they announced that they're doing the Uncharted collection, which will hold people over same until... Kind of but Naughty Dog's not working on that. No. They, can, they can come up with that idea late idea. and then push it out but for someone else concept. to do. it's the It's a remake. Yeah. Exa well, yeah. But, I mean, you can HD do both. Remaster. Yeah, well, HD remaster to HD games. With know. Uncharted 4 multiplayer made up. Oh, excuse me. So. Yeah, I, I definitely think the in the Final Fantasy thing's a little different, especially the more retro games. The more retro you go back, if you did like a Battle Toads, something like that, it, with a full blown AAA thing, that would be crazy, right? Battle Toads would be weird in this day and age. I'm just saying that. <laughs> Well, that we're would gonna be, be able a to play definite it a remake weeks. that would be far enough away than something that was yeah. on the 316 PS3. I mean, 
Dishonor Definitive Edition, kind of pushing the boundaries. Yeah, exactly. Gears 1, probably not so much because it was a first generation title. Yeah. Been out for years now. Now, if they'd have done Gears 3 or Gears Judgment Remake, I would have been like, nah, don't do that. Well, because those games suck. Well, Gears 3 didn't <laughs> suck. Gears 3 was good. <laughs> they weren't I like Judgment, so. Ew, gross. Like Master Chief Collection obviously was big enough to warrant having Yeah, that. let's not talk about Master Chief I'm just saying that it. was a huge flop. The, the, the idea of putting all the Halo in one place. Was, yeah, you know. it, it's more fan service than anything. But year after year, it kind of flip-flops with fans. We hear people go, well, we, we're excited for the remakes, but we want to see new IPs. And then yeah. back then, it's like, well, the well, new, IPs, new IPs suck. Let's yeah, we, the new IPs look good, or the, I'm not interested in them. But, you know, where's that Final Fantasy VII remake that we wanted to hear about? Where's, where's all this other stuff? Where's my sequel to this game? You know, right. it, we're not getting new. I I want to see new IPs. And it might come down to the, the actual stats. I'll take both. Too, like how many sure. sales, all that kind of stuff. But I'm just excited about games. How about yeah. that? I'm, I'm excited, excited for games. games. We like to play all the games. <laughs> so. Yeah. By the way, uh, you can check us out on youtubecom TV, twitchtv press underscore start underscore TV. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We very much appreciate it. Until next time. Bye. See Later. You.